This is Robert Gardner. We're gonna work on the upper back and a portion of the shoulder blade related to back pain. We worked on Karina, her upper back, while she was lying on her back. Now we're going to work on the same area with it exposed towards us. Going to work around the paraspinal muscles. Your spine right here, you have vertebral processes that protrude to the back, what you feel is the spine. But right to either side, you have muscles that shorten to lift, like she was going into cobra pose. I'm going to work right along those muscles in the upper back into this same area. You can actually see there's a little bit of therapeutic inflammation from what we did previously because we were applying enough pressure there. Just means there's a little blood flow. Blood flow is good for the muscles, good for lymph, long term, brings healing, to make a long story short. And switching what we did previously, now I'm gonna hook my hand underneath the shoulder. My thumb is going to come on top and I'm gonna mobilize, sort of a pin and stretch. You can see that my thumb is perfectly stacked to deliver pressure there. I'm lifting the shoulder blade, jostling when I find a good spot. This jostle also encourages the receiver to let go, to release. Since the shoulder blade gives me enough of a grip here, I'm going to reach the fingers underneath and I'm going to gently mobilize the shoulder blade. You can see that she gets some neck movement, gets the shoulder blade to release, and I'm gently pulling the shoulder blade back. That stretches pec, stretches pec minor attaches at the coracoid process we talked about. So now I'm working the front from the back. In the previous video, I was working the back from the front, working around the shoulder blade. This hand started to get tired, so I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna come to the top of the table and lengthen her shoulder blade down and away. I can reach in with the thumb, gently press through that junction, up or back and neck. This spot right here, dense, tense, probably a little tender. And it's light pressure. I'm using the fingers more to feel my way around. When I decide I want more pressure, this is how I use it. I'm gonna use the forearm and elbow right into there. Because of the position of my shoulder to my elbow, I'm leaning across. It doesn't deliver quite as much pressure than if I stood up and had my shoulder above my elbow using gravity to sink down. Because I can't see Karina's facial expression, how's the pressure? Ah, she, she gave the universal groan of, yes, this feels good. I'm going to give her a bit more by standing gently. This works my legs and core. And how's the pressure there? Good, Karina? Okay, not too much. This one spot I can hang out. One, I'm compressing through skin. I'm compressing muscle. I felt density here. The tissue felt tense. It wasn't as mobile. It wasn't as pliable as what I was working on earlier. And now with that pressure, it's like I'm pushing the elbow in, I'm gently grabbing that skin and then moving the tissue. I'm gonna move it down that way first. Then I'm gonna move it and roll it down. 
Then I'm gonna move it over and out. It slightly changes the position, the piece of the elbow that's grabbing. Which one do you prefer, Karina? This way? Or this way? She prefers this one, so that's what I'm gonna hang out in. I can balance my body weight, grab hold, lead it down. I can reach to the base of the skull. I'll often engage multiple points of contact. It means that I can work on two things at once. As a beginner, you may just start with this, but as you work, you'll figure out ways to incorporate more techniques to a bit more. And I'm gonna change my forearm and elbow position. I'm gonna gently again glide down, give her a bit more pressure right there. Her breathing is calm, slow, and steady. You'll notice over time as you work that if you get into something that's really problematic, they're gonna hold their breath. You usually give them enough pressure to make contact and then slowly engage their breathing. You can see the little bit of redness that came from this. Again, that therapeutic inflammation. Now that I've used my forearm and elbow, I'm using my fingers to explore and go, hey, what's going on in there? Move this around. Most people who are having upper back pain, particularly, they feel like this part of their back is tight. And I think that's incorrect. These muscles are actually weak. And what happens is these muscles are lengthened and pulled forward. They're like a bowstring on a bow. They've been pulled forward. So long term, what I'm trying to do is open the chest, the pec, the pec minor, and allow these muscles to fall back. In other words, to shorten. These muscles are weak. The muscles in the front are strong. So the muscles in the front are winning the battle and these are losing. Long term, that slouch, we spend all day as massage therapists trying to help people with to correct and we find better ways to work. I'm pinching along the trapezius, actually doing a little skin roll here. There's a grab. Pressure still okay, Karina? I ask because she's face down, can't see her face, want to make sure it's comfortable. I'm reaching in, not nearly as tight on this side. Completely what I thought I would find. She's tighter on the right, but she's also a guitarist. She's using her hands and arms. Now I'm gonna grab on both sides and gently glide. The pointer finger and middle finger of either hand is gliding through this tissue. You can work around the straps on her top. Right in there, a little pinch and a pull. Again, I'm just looking for movement restrictions. Muscles cause movement, and we assess what muscles need work based on movement restrictions. It's like you work in reverse. Right up this in here, still some tension. Can always work my way up through the neck don't tend to press on the head because her face is in the face rest, tends to mash the receiver, but right at the base of the skull here, I can press all four fingers on either side of the spine, right into the suboccipitals. The suboccipitals are muscles that connect the atlas and I believe axis, the first two cervical vertebrae, into the base of the skull. Right in here. Once I've made contact, there's a gliding back and forth motion. I'm feeling for tension there. Slightly changed my hand position. A 
lengthening that shoulder blade down and away. We're gonna work over towards the rotator cuff. This area in here contributes to a lot of upper back pain. I'm going to gently engage a full palm slide over this portion of the rotator cuff. This muscle is called infraspinatus. Just like infrared is below the red on the spectrum of light, infraspinatus is below the spine of the scapula right here. Engaging a light slide down, over, and out. This junction between the upper back and the arm. Gliding in. You've gotten your glitter on me, Karina. I am now glittered. And again, palm slide right across. If you need to change your body position, do so. I'm going to work slowly, gently with a flat portion of the fist here. This is right on top of the shoulder blade, gliding down. Very slow. Think of a snail just gliding along. You're really trying to make contact with the tissue there. And move slowly out. The rotator cuff, which infraspinatus is a portion of, rotates the humerus. It rotates the upper arm bone. So the cuff reaches around both sides of the humerus to engage range of motion, movement around to rotate the arm. This gets constant use on the right hand. Computer programmers, people who work at a computer, their mouse, they use this constantly. I was in this lower portion, so now I'm gonna reach up. Here's again the spine of the scapula. You'll feel this bony ridge here. I'm still below that. This is infraspinatus. Supraspinatus is the muscle above, still part of the rotator cuff. I'm gently engaging in and then sliding out, down, and away. Pressure still okay, Karina? It's great. I don't know if you can hear it, but when she says yes, she says, uh-huh. And that's what you want. As you learn to work, you're sometimes going to be able to deliver too much pressure. That's not really what we're going for. You always want adequate pressure. You always want to go with what the receiver can receive, but you also want to make them aware of something that might be giving them problems. Long-term, you're trying to engage the receiver's nervous system. You give them enough pressure so that you're engaging activity in their nervous system where they pay attention, they go, ooh. And long-term, it feels like you're helping them meditate. You're helping draw their focus and attention to that one spot that you're working on so that their nerves, their nervous system can process that stimulus and have a response of relaxation, of unwinding, letting go. Their body long-term chooses a better posture, a better position to have their arm, shoulder blade, upper back in. Still sliding down that entire time, working out towards the humerus, the upper arm bone, following infraspinatus below the spine of the scapula, right into the shoulder joint. I lighten my pressure a little bit as I get to the arm, getting towards the tricep out over the shoulder and engage a slight twist because ergonomically that felt like good motion to me and I'm going to place her arm and move compress gently here engaging some rotation you might be able to see in the video that her shoulder blade starts to move you can see that I'm working my way down towards the hand my hand is pushing the fingers out and away. Feels like I'm draining the arm 
mobilizing the shoulder by pressing on the humerus. This is a gentle pressure, guiding, gliding the fingers open. We spend so much time grasping. Massage is all about letting go. Now, infraspinatus again, below the spine of the scapula, out over here, all these fibers glide down and in. You're gonna find teres, I believe major and minor over here as well, but I wanna go across the fibers. I was going with them before, I was going with the grain, now I'm going across. And I'm going to slowly, this is the edge of the shoulder blade, and then just above, you're gonna find that there's muscle right there. That is the border of infraspinatus. I'm gonna go halfway between this point and the shoulder, right there. I'm gonna find, you'll, you'll bump very gently over that. I'm gonna sink in and I'm going to glide up. Now I'm doing this gently, solid reinforced thumbs. I'm just helping Karina be aware of this area. Karina, are you feeling anything in the front of your shoulder? Yes, she's feeling a little bit of pain, a little bit referred pain, some trigger point pain in the front of her shoulder. With practice, you'll know how much pressure to deliver. And that was how I knew by feel. I'm going to back off and then on infraspinatus over here towards this border, probably about right there. This feels very dense. This doesn't feel pliable, it feels stuck. Your tactile sensitivity will increase over time. This right here feels tender. I'm gonna use these two fingers to reinforce this thumb. You might be able to see in the video that my fingers turn slightly white because as I'm pressing through the tissue, the blood flow can't quite make its way in. She just had a big sigh because I bet you that is tender. How's that? Yeah. Then I'm gonna back off and I'm gonna go a little bit higher. There's this little groove. Here's the spine of the scapula, but right in here usually there's another little spot. It tends to be tender. See, she moved her arm. It was almost too much. So now we're gonna change her position. I'm gonna let her arm rest at its side working into this groove right here. I'm gonna find that tender spot. Pressure's okay, Karina? Now, remember the rotator cuff, which an infraspinatus is part of, rotates the humerus. I'm going to facilitate that by holding pressure and then mobilizing her shoulder joint. I could feel that muscle move. And I'm doing this for her initially. Now, that spot feels pretty uh, tender, feels important, Karina. Now, I'm gonna hold this, I'm using this reinforced thumb. I want you to engage that same motion. I want you to lift your arm like you're waving at me. There you go. And then the other way, reach down. And repeat that just a few times. I'm just gonna hold. If it's too much pressure, let me know, I'll back off. I can feel the muscle when she lifts like she's waving at me, it's gonna lift because that muscle is tightening. Pin and stretch, some active, there we go, let it go. And now I'm gonna hold and just shake her out. I'm gonna let that go, gonna roll this guy up, and I'm gonna glide again, just to be nice. If you decided you needed a little bit more glide on the skin, you could use a little bit of cream or lotion I initially don't use any because it makes it harder to sink into a single spot. This junction between the shoulder blade and the arm is a problem area. It's not only influencing what happens from the shoulder blade to the upper back, but what happens from the shoulder blade to the arm. The upper back is setting the posture for the shoulder blades and where they move in gravity, in motion. 
rarely does someone have a problem with just one thing. There's usually a high level of comorbidity. They're having multiple problems, but they tend to cascade. They start with poor spine posture and then come out from there. I'm going to go back to where we were, lifting the head, mobilizing the shoulder, and glide through here again. Up through the upper back. And bringing the chair around, we have that grip underneath the shoulder blade. I'm reaching down and around, just mobilizing. Pressure's okay? Oh, that wasn't you. That was the chair making noise. So, see how mobile this looks compared to when we started? She's let go. The process of trust that you build with the receiver is really important. Long term, you're providing quality touch. You're making sure they feel heard in a sense. You're not being mean. Moving that around, mobilizing again through the shoulder, upper back, shoulder blade all connected. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Robert Gardner from robertgardnerwellness.com. You can get a free time massage workbook at my website.